Caleb, here we are. Welcome to the Coverdale Railroad. The railroad station is always busy with people doing all kinds of different jobs to make sure the train runs safely and on time. Many people work on the track crew doing all kinds of important work. They shovel ballast, that gravel and rock underneath the tracks so they're level and sturdy. They lay down those square beams of wood called ties, and they hammer railroad spikes like giant nails through the tie plates to keep the tracks in place. It's painstaking and low paid work. Recent immigrants like those who came here from China and Ireland and black Americans freed from slavery ended up on the track crews that built the transcontinental and other railroad tracks across the country. This country owes a lot of its success to them. Ah, there's my pal Ethan the engineer. It's his job to operate the train's engine and inspect it to make sure it's working properly. Remember when I taught you about Morse code? Yeah, it was invented to send messages using dots and dashes. Right, the train and station are so loud it's easier for the engineer and brakeman to talk in code using flashing lamps. Speaking of Morse code, here's Miss Clara, the telegraph operator. Hello, Clara. Hey there, Caleb. Are you excited for your first trip on the Dawn Treader? I sure am, Miss Clara. Caleb and I were just talking about Morse code. I do know all about Morse code. It's the way we telegraph operators send important messages to one another all day. And have you heard the news about the telephone? It's really catching on nowadays. You two better get going now. Have a wonderful journey, you adventurous travelers. Good day to you, Miss Clara. Thank you, Miss Clara. At your service, welcome aboard the Dawn Trail. startled you. No, sir. It's just, I, 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 You wouldn't be the first passenger to tell me they heard voices speak to them. Sometimes they say it's a valley's voice that they actually hear. Thomas Edison was one of those passengers. He rode this train every week for six years, studying the rocks and searching for the rare magnetic iron ore of the secret valley. I suppose to use for one of his inventions. He told me if he listened carefully enough, he'd hear voices tell him stories about our valley. Fascinating man, that Edison. Well, I have more tickets to punch here before the next stop. Look and listen closely, young man. You might come to hear the stories, too. Uh, I'm going into seven. The conductor's right, you know. Train, you've startled the child again. My apologies. It was not my intent. Who's there? I can hear you. Why can I see you? Dear child, <laughs> you can see us. All humans can see us, but most don't look deep enough or stare right past us, and so can't know us. 
you are one of the few in this time and place who has kept yourself open to us, who has held on to your sense. I don't quite understand. Are you sure this one's held on to his sense? Here, I will take a different form for you. Who are you? Where did you come from? So many questions. To answer some of them, I will tell you a story. Mm, perhaps I will show you a story. I have been called many things. When the first people got here thousands of years ago, the name they gave me was Kahishinahaki. They called themselves the Lenapeyo when your ancestors arrived here from across the ocean. The Lenapeyo called them Shuanagok. The newcomers called them the Delaware in return. And the Lenapeyo now use that name as well. Your ancestors brought their knowledge of trains with them to this place. But they made train with the iron, water, and trees of this land, Turtle Island, which you know now is North America. This is why train calls me Kahishinahaki. In your language, it means something like our Mother Earth. Your ancestors treated me quite differently than the first people, and their kin only seemed to treat me worse than the generation before them. Yet, I am still your mother, and I love all my children, even though some cause me to suffer. I'm very sorry about that, Ka Kahe. You may call me Valley. This is how you know me best. I have enjoyed your visits and watching you play by this crook as you grew. Valley, how can a train have a name that likes to call you? Do you mean that the other voice I heard it's is... It's me! This is Train. She has many names. Most people call her Locomotive. Thousands of years ago, before the steam engine and the railroads of the iron and steel, she was called Wagonway. She rode along on wheels and tracks of wood and was powered by horses and other animals. But I will let her tell her own story. I want to show off the rest of my beautiful cars to help tell my story. Valley? Allow Caleb to move with you unseen. Now then, Caleb, walk through to my last car and sit near the stove in the back corner. While you walk, undoubtedly marveling at my beauty, I'll tell a story of trains and railroads. Beyond moving people and products around, our story is about the flow of energy and the innovation that transformed the way people lived forever. Until the Industrial Revolution, our wheels and the rails we rode on were made of trees. Still, many thousands of trees were used to make the railroad ties that hold our tracks in place. Many more trees would be cut down and used to heat water from the streams or pulled up from deep wells in the ground. When the water was hot enough, it turned to steam. You know what happens when a liquid like water turns into a gas like steam, don't you? You get the force that powered the Industrial Revolution. When water becomes steam, it creates enough pressure to push very heavy things, like the pistons of a steam engine, which push against a train's wheels and get them turning. It takes a lot of pushing to move something as big and heavy as me not to mention all the freight and passengers I carry. to our secret valley. Isn't it interesting how everything is woven together like the delicate threads of a spider's web? Your father was right about the many gifts I provide here that drew your ancestors to this place. But that is not the whole story and it is important to learn many perspectives. 
As the Lenape understood, the land does not belong to us. We belong to her and have a responsibility to take care of her. The valley that you love and that loves you remains their home and loves them too. Thank you, Valley. I will remember your stories and share what I've learned. Speaking of stories, this one's nearing its end. It was lovely talking to you, Caleb. Wasn't it, Train? Indeed it was. Hold on to your curiosity and wonder, Caleb. There are humans' most precious qualities. It's up to people like you, Caleb, who sense how we're all connected. We must learn better ways to live with each other, as well as nature. Best of luck, brave traveler. Now, it's about time for me to announce that we are arriving in Pottstown, our last stop. <clears throat> what I mean to say is, <clears throat> last stop. Farewell, child. We're almost in the station, young man. Let's get you back to your seat. This train sure can get loud, can't she? It's a good thing she has this valley to cradle her and calm her back down. All right now, enjoy your visit to Pottstown. Ah, there you are, Caleb. This is our stop. Where'd you go? I went on an adventure. The train and the valley could talk to me, and I could talk to them. They told me amazing stories, and I learned how everything is connected. Well, I'll be. Sounds like you have a lot to teach me now, Professor Caleb. I'm all ears on our walk to Grandpa's shop. Don't leave out a single detail. <laughs>